We're glad to have everybody here this evening. My name is Darren King. I'm the city manager for the city of East Point. And thank you all for coming to our meeting. This is our fourth community meeting on the Microsoft development. And so just want to welcome all of you here, all of our guests, and uh, let you know we appreciate your valuable time. And so we're going to go ahead and get ourselves started. Uh, what I'd like to do first is just give a, a, a little overview of introductions of my team, let you know who they are as it relates to the various departments and their roles. Then I'm going to turn over to our team of Microsoft. I want to thank all of our members of Microsoft. Raise your hands, you guys out there. You'll get to know who they are, too. Thank them personally from they've come in and have to accept this, this whole uh, out, layout you see. And I want to thank them for being here today and to allowing for us to have this great interaction with our community. So, all right, well, let's do this. I'm going to ask my directors and members of my plan review team to come on forward. I'm just going to do a quick introduction of you all, and then we're then going to turn to uh, Microsoft, and I'm going to ask for John McKinley to come forward, and he can introduce the Microsoft team and then the format that we're going to follow. All right. Hey, Chief Kendry, I guess you took All right. All right, so this is uh, uh, the members, and we have a lot more, uh, a few more team members, but these are, uh, are uh, I guess, the frontline directors and the, and the city of the staff who help to make sure that all of our permitting and planning process goes through properly. And so I'm going to have them introduce themselves and then say a little bit about what they do and then turn it back over to me. Thank you, city manager. Hi, my name is Kimberly Smith. I am the director of the planning and community development department. And in my role, we basically run, over, run through the building permitting process, the plan review process, the inspections, as well as the CEO process. So we are going to be spending a lot of time um, with, our, with the Microsoft during, their, during the project. And as I stated before, I don't know, it may have been the first meeting, um, this particular process is going to use is in the process of using every single application that our department works through. Um, and if they're, I'll just say I'll pass it on to Ms. Melissa. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Melissa Echeverria. I'm the Water Resources Director for the City of East Point. Um, water Resources, we deal with stormwater, floodplain. Uh, we deal with water and sewer regulations to ensure environmental compliance. And we work in conjunction with the state of Georgia for the issuance of the land disturbance permit. Beyond the LDP, we have a senior environmental inspector that is not here. He's on his way. His name is Mr. Anderson Thomas. And he actually looks at the construction site from now until the notice of termination that coincides with the state of Georgia regulations for stabilizing the site. Good evening. My name is Rezo Oro. I'm the stormwater uh, floodplain manager for the city of East Point. Uh, anything related to that uh, floodplain and the stormwater, uh, I'll look at it, I'll review the plans and those type of things. Good evening, I'm, I'm Quintavious Hill. I'm the assistant fire marshal for the city of East Point. Uh, my job pretty much entails reviewing plans and any fire or life safety issues. Good evening, Charles Kendrick. Uh, battalion chief. I deal with everything internal and external as far as customers. If it touches fire services, it touches me. And, uh, the fire chief is Chief Thornton, but uh, he had to attend another engagement to these. But I just want to thank these guys here and the members of the team who helped to make us op uh, a good operating op uh, organization. So I thank them very, very much. So now what I want to do is I want to ask for John McKinley to come up, our community engagement manager for Microsoft. Uh, and some of you have already gotten an opportunity to meet John, as well as some of the staff members. I want to have an opportunity to have John come forward. He's going to tell you uh, what he does, his role, and introduce all the members of his team as well. So John, come on forward. Thank you, Darren. Appreciate it. Good evening, everybody. Uh, again, I'm uh, John McKinley of the new community engagement manager for this project. I started uh, December 13th, <laughs> so uh, 
still uh, getting my bearings, uh, but I'm extremely glad to be here with you all this evening. Um, just to take a step back, I, I, first off, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out uh, to this uh, meeting. I know um, there are many other places and things you all could have been doing this evening, but you chose to be here with us, so we appreciate that. We're grateful. I know many of you are. You give them a hand. Thank you. But yeah, I know uh, many of you are here tonight because you're uh, excited. You can't wait to learn a little bit more about how we've uh, addressed your concerns and incorporated the feedback that you all have so graciously provided over the past few months. Um, so we're also excited to, sh to share that with you. Um, before I give a brief overview of how we expect tonight to go, um, I also want to thank the, the city, the entire uh, city of East Point, uh, from Darren, uh, this, uh, Mayor Ingram, uh, the council members who represent this district, Councilwoman uh, Gordon, Councilwoman Butler, as well as the city staff. We appreciate uh, your leadership, your support, um, and also you know holding us accountable, making sure that we're uh, engaging with the community. Uh, and I can tell you that the city definitely has your back. They have your best interests at heart. Um, and, and at the end of the day, we want to be good partners. We want to be good neighbors. We want to be here in East Point. Um, so again, we uh, thank you for this opportunity. And uh, in terms of, go ahead and give a brief overview. So how we're expecting tonight to go, uh, like the, the past three meetings, you guys um, participated in a kind of a town hall format, but we're gonna pivot. We're gonna give you guys an opportunity to speak directly with the subject matter experts. You know, I don't know about you, but you know, if I'm on the phone with customer service and I'm talking to somebody and they don't, understand my question, they, they can't help me. I wanna to speak to the person who can actually help me. So that's what tonight is about. You're gonna have the subject matter experts, the heavy hitters, the people who are at the, the table making the decisions, um, able to answer your questions, address your concerns. Um, and, and after we uh, introduce the project team, we'll go through a brief presentation again, just showing you exactly how we're incorporating that feedback and then we'll break out into uh, kind of a breakout session. Again, those one-on-one -on -one conversations where you can digest that information at your pace. And in terms of housekeeping, we've got some refreshments and snacks on this table. If you haven't signed in yet, please do so before you leave. Uh, bathrooms are out this door. Uh, you'll pass the front desk on your left-hand side, and it's when you make that first right, you'll see the bathrooms on the left. But again, we thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, and yeah, with that, I'll... I do want to acknowledge my, my mayor, my council members here. Mayor Dina Honda Ingram, council member Stephanie Gordon is here as well. Is there anybody else on this before we turn it on? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> council member Joseph Bailey, council member Sharon Sharpshire. So give them a hand, please. I can't do my job without them and they've been very supportive of me in all the endeavors. And, they, and you see they're here because they're very concerned about this project. And so just want to make sure I acknowledge them, and I'm going to turn back over to you, John. Thanks so much. Thanks, Darren. All right, so we'll start off with Ms. LaBria Holt. Do you want to come up and introduce yourself? No, oh, I can the... be quick. I can talk from here. Good to see all of you. Um, it's great to see faces again who I've had opportunity to talk to one-on-one. -on -one. My name is LaBria Lee Holt. I do state government affairs for Microsoft across Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, Mississippi, and South Carolina. I am thrilled to be here in my home of Atlanta and in the city of East Point. Uh, so thank you for having me and thank you for your time. Thanks, LaBria. And again, uh, myself, community engagement manager, um, at the end of the day, my role is to basically be the on the ground, the eyes and ears for the project team to make sure that, again, we're listening, we're addressing concerns, you all feel a part of the process and empower. Uh, that, that's my, my role um, on this project. And next we have uh, Jonathan Noble, who flew in from, all the way from Washington to be here tonight. Uh, thank you all very much, Jonathan Noble, Senior Director for Coming Fair. I've had a good look at working with Maria. Um, as well as a number of other people on the project team on government affairs uh, and data center work throughout the southern U.S. Thanks, Jonathan. And next we have uh, Chris Sander. Hi, Chris. Nice to see you. Hi, nice to see familiar faces from last time. I lead our global 
plan development and community engagement team. So happy to be here. Thank you, Chris. And he also flew uh, from Washington to be here, so we appreciate uh, his time. Uh, next, we have Ms. Diane Strong, who many of you are, may have already been familiar with. Hi, I'm Diane Strom. I'm the Community Engagement Lead. I see a lot of familiar faces that I've met in person or online, and now it's great to meet some of those online or in person. Um, and I do community engagement for the Americas, so North uh, and South America. So thank you. Next, we have Mr. Michael Trader. Hi, Michael Trader. I'm the uh, principal construction manager. I'm responsible for building all the Microsoft campuses in Atlanta. Thank you, Michael. Next, we have uh, Kelly uh, Lanier Arnold, who uh, flew in from Virginia, right? Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Really glad to be here. I'm a um, senior program manager for Microsoft, and I handle community development work also. Uh, working pretty heavily right now at a technical college to try and get a program for um, IT training for entry-level jobs developed. So. Thanks, Kelly. And to Kelly's right, we have Ms. Burgundy Kinlaw, who's actually local to Atlanta. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Burgundy Kinlaw. I'm the business program manager for the nonprofit Tech Acceleration Program for Black and African American communities. My role is responsible for providing black-serving nonprofits with tech at no cost. Um, like John mentioned, partnership is very important to market to Microsoft. So I'm trying to create as many partnerships with black serving nonprofits to ensure they can help the community. Thank you, Burgundy. All right, so before we uh, go ahead and break out into the sessions, we're going to have a, a brief presentation from Diane to kind of go over um, how, again, how we addressed your concerns and incorporated your feedback that you provided over the past few months. John, and thank you all for being out. Oh, great. So first of all, I want to just say thank you again for your time, the, the feedback you've given us over the last couple of months. This is a really quick summary of what we've heard from you. We've heard that construction dust and construction has been a challenge for the adjacent uh, neighbors. We've worked with our GC on noise. We've worked with them to add additional water trucks to limit dust. And we've put together a package of services uh, to help neighbors, um, the adjacent neighbors, with the dust. In addition, we've heard concerns about the health, uh, health issues and visibility of the substation, noise and lights related to the data center, as well as the emergency entrance. And what we have today is to show you how we've addressed that feedback, the feedback you gave us. and. Um, this is what, I think some of you saw this when we came in, and this is what we're here today to share, is that we have moved the substation in response uh, to your feedback. We've, we've, we've uh, really took your feedback and thought about different options and different considerations we could have. Um, we even looked at options the city provided, and uh, the feedback on uh, you know, really honoring the feedback about quality of life, not seeing the substation, and we ultimately uh, came up with moving, removing one of our buildings and moving the substation there. And so, as you can see, we have two buildings now and then the substation as far <coughs> away from residential as possible on our site. And just um, briefly, I wanted to show a side by side to see how much it changed. Um, I won't go over all of those messages, but basically, um, it talks about how we've moved the substation, how we removed the building, how we added space, um, actually moved ATL 06, which is, if I can get this to work, this building, we actually, from the original plan, we've moved it to the north, further out of the um, direct line of sight for Heritage Park neighbors. And then this graphic is also in the back. It also shows um, some of the dimensions. And so you can see that where the substation is now, we're 920 feet from this residential property, which is about three football fields, or over three football fields. And then um, over 1,000 feet be uh, between the substation and the next neighbor over. In addition, we've added more space and moved this building to the north. So um, to get it out of the line of sight. 
of um, the Heritage Park neighborhood. Um, and as you can see, we lost a building and the substation is there now. It's about 550 feet off of um, the Ben Hill Road um, over here. And just to orient, um, All Welcome Road is here. Some other things to orient you on, um, we moved the secondary or emergency entrance about 400 feet north. Um, one of the points of feedback that we heard um, in September was that this uh, entrance was too close to the residence, so we moved it further north. On this map, you'll also see some of things that kind of look like divots to me right here, but they're actually stormwater ponds. And you heard the city talk about how they manage stormwater. Some of you may have gotten a letter in the mail from the Army Corps of Engineers and the Georgia <coughs> Department of Natural Resources. And that letter is the standard process. I have to admit, it surprised us. We didn't know that they were sending that letter out. We didn't know that they had even reviewed our permit. Um, so just to give you uh, uh, some background, they, they have a standard process anytime uh, a developer, any developer, whether it's apartments, uh, data centers, buildings, logistics, anytime they move, uh, a developer moves an acre of dirt, they um, have different permitting processes for stormwater and um, any wetlands that might be impacted. And they do that to make sure that we meet the Clean Water Act and we protect water, we protect human health, and we uh, protect the environment. So those stormwater ponds are there to take the rainfall um, and detain it and slowly let it out. So just a couple of overviews. This is a map that um, we have in the back, as well as I have a small one, and it's one I'm happy to go over at one-on-one -on -one with folks, um, and um, we can talk more. So again, another what's the difference, just to show you what we showed in September versus where we are today, and just to give you a little bit more insight, this is actually a six-foot berm and then the trees are on top of it. So again, with the idea of screening our, our facility from the um, community. This is another view. Um, this is uh, the primary entrance up there by All Welcome Road. The, and so this is what it would look like. Welcome all. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all are welcome. welcome. <laughs> Both are positive. Um, but this is the um, view from Welcome All. Um, and, uh, and on day one, we've tried to put in as many trees as we can um, to help screen. There may be more opportunities for trees, but we've, we've worked hard to at least screen it the way that we can. There's also a substation barrier fence. You can't see it from here, but there actually is one. And then you can see when the trees start to grow in, it's going to be you won't see it. Another view, this is that new emergency entrance. It's 400 feet north of where it was originally. And um, so you can see that we have the berms over here. And then there's 25 foot hills back here to, again, help uh, screen the view of the substation. In addition, there's a jog in this road so that you're not looking straight back onto the, the substation or the data center really with the intent of screening the facility. Uh, this is that view I mentioned earlier. You can see on day one with the six foot um, tall berms and trees on top. And this is what it would look with grow in. There are different types of trees. Um, there are some that are canopy, some are that are evergreen, so that we do tr work towards having that year round screening. And finally, this is the view for, from the neighbors across the street. This is what we would imagine once we get our landscaping in with the trees on top of the berms. And this would be the view um, after the trees mature. One thing I forgot to note is that you'll see on some of the maps big green areas where we don't have trees. We're not quite sure what we're going to do in those areas. We are doing a sustainability some study this spring. And so that will be part of the analysis. We could replace it with meadows that help pollinators. We could replace it with trees. I've heard other ideas from neighbors. Mr. Williams mentioned a park or trails. So we're just trying to assess what what could go on those in those more open spaces. Uh, excuse me. Uh, approximately 
day one view, view after trees mature, uh, how many years will it take those trees to mature? The trees, it depends on the trees. Keep in mind they'll be six foot up on the berm, oh, but it okay. could take 10 to 20 years. Depend, depends on the tree oh, yeah, with, oh, to be fully mature. So I appreciate the question, and I think those are the sorts of things that we want to be able to discuss. Well, she's saying, you're saying that these trees are six feet tall. The, the berm, so the hillside that they're on, is six feet tall, and then the trees will be put on top of that to start with. So that it is below the street level, I mean the sidewalk level. So the berm is up higher. Yes. How many does it? The berm sits up six feet. Yep. And then the tree. Then the tree. Yep. Yeah. But I and I appreciate that question, and um, it's a great segue into the breakout session that we want to have to be able to talk one on one on those questions. Like I said, I have a graphic that might help kind of explain that a little bit more. Okay. Um, we we have a couple of different folks. I know that. Um, John introduced them, but we'll have folks, um, myself, Michael, Jonathan, Chris, and um, John McKinley at the Plan Update Station, which has all the graphics. We also have Michael Trader here. Michael, if you can wave your hand again. He's here to talk about construction. Um, we brought Drew Thatcher. Drew, if you can stand up and wave your hand. He's a third party expert on health related to to the substation. Um, so if you have questions, he's going to be up here. And then um, Kelly and Burgundy are here to talk about community investments, what we're doing now, our investment areas. Um, so I just want to say thank you all very much for coming out tonight. Thank you all for your feedback. Oh, Chris. Could we could we see if, if there are just any other questions from the group before we before we break? Sure. If, if, if there are any for the group, if there's not, then we can break that. Sure. This is uh, you uh, had a uh, a map. Uh, you should have had a picture back further of where the, the retaining wall is. From uh, yes, that. Now, right next to that, the curve in there. There's supposed to be some kind of water. Right here. And what about the one on the other side of the land? The you see this one. There's one here. Yeah. There's that one. one. Yep. That one. Yeah. Uh, is there going? To, is that all going to slope toward toward those those water retention places? I believe. So. I, Michael, you want to talk about this? The question is, will the land slope towards? I think you're saying yes. will it slope yeah. so yeah. so the yes. creek? So where, 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 where the retention yeah. ponds are, the water when it rains drains to collect the retention in those different areas. Now, those areas will, how will the water move? If the water is not moving, you're going to have a bunch of mosquitoes. So the water, so there are skimmers in the retention ponds, so it has a, so it kind of drains down. I think the Williams had asked the same question, so I just don't know what I'm not familiar with is how long it takes for the water to get through the skimmer to evaporate. We've had a lot of rain on our site, so we've been kind of mucking out so that we can, we're, we're kind of in the process of completing the stormwater retention process and um, getting all the pipes in, but we've just had a lot of rain, so it's kind of been staying there. When it would go down, we'd get another big rainfall, but I'm gonna find out from my AE what we can expect for the drainage time if the rain is like a seven or 14 day period between rains. Because the, the Williams were asking the same is kind the, of question. The, the question though is that is the water won't be stagnant, say, That's for, for, for weeks on. No, no, it'll, it'll drain, right? I just, that, yeah. that was the question, like, yeah. it won't, I think, I think the question was, is it gonna be there long enough to have breed mosquitoes and right. other type of, yeah. and so I need Snakes. to get back to them to find out if it's, if the, Water sits there. If the water collects, how long does it take to drain down, right? Yeah. And it doesn't drain exactly. down automatically. It's kind of a slow, rapid release into the system. Well, I just don't know the time frame. 
What's it, the retainer pond going to be concrete or is it just going to be just... No, it's, it's not concrete. So it's, it's, uh, it's grassed and it has topsoil. So part of the water actually goes into the earth and then part of it actually goes through the stormwater piping. But there's a skimmer there to kind of weed out and keep um, the sediment from getting into the storm water piping. Is, is the environmental person here? I just want to share, like, I had a conversation with them and I talked to your concern about the snakes and rats. Yeah. yeah. Um, I talked about like, seeing more dead raccoons. I know they keep away snakes and rats, right? right? So they talked about possibly doing some type of vegetation to keep them there. I don't know if that will work with the noise, because I know the deer are already running, like we right. see five at a yeah. time, like out. Um, yeah, we yes. But um, I guess, you know, in terms of what Lexi is gonna mm -hmm. do to work on that, like that's very important to make sure that we don't get critters yeah. and, Thing because yeah, it, that is yeah, and Lexi, Lexi and I are working on that study together. <coughs> so it, it is what we're planning on with our sustainability study is looking at those options. Yes, Dr. Martin Rogers. Yes. Thank you all so much for coming tonight. But I have just a couple of questions, and of course, my first question is about the substation. And have you all done everything that you can do? to, I guess, look at moving it off-site, maybe in the area, but off-site. Is this the best that can be done? That's what I'd like to know. That's my first question. Okay, and my second question is, in reference to the wall, how tall is it? I'm a visual learner, so mm -hmm. is it as tall as this hotel building? How tall is so, that wall? So I'll, do, I'll take the wall one first. <laughs> Uh, I don't know the other one. So the wall kind of from here, it, if you, it kind of does a little bit of a ramp and then it slopes and comes across and then it goes down at its highest point, it's 30 feet. Like if you're looking at it at the center and it's a two stage wall, right? So the wall that's currently bit up, built out there is wall number one and then you come, I think you probably go like maybe five or six feet in front of it and then there's another wall that drops down in front of that. But the wall, the retainer wall that's out there now, at its highest point, I think it's about 30 feet. All right, and then going on to continue with the wall, will it come all the way maybe around? Because I was in the back of our community last night and I was able to see through the property, see the data center. So are you, are you all amenable to bringing that wall all the way around in conjunction with evergreen trees to just kind of block any nice lighting that may come from the property or that humming sound that I know must blow and I'll mm -hmm. talk to that one. Yeah, the, the short answer is um, absolutely. The, the areas that are kind of open right now because we've moved buildings around, we're definitely looking at screening options, combination of, you know, is that fencing, is that uh, replanting trees, et cetera. Um, we just didn't want to put anything up here that we weren't certain that we were going to be able to do. So um, absolutely, uh, that is something that has been top of mind. It's actually been top of mind for the team. This, you know, Chris and I had the privilege of coming out here in November, uh, meeting with Mayor, a number of others. And the first thing we did is we actually went to Heritage Park, went to that lawn area right across the street, and we were like, we need to do better here. And so, yes, we're absolutely committed to doing better. Um, and we're going to be looking at a variety of options of what that looks like. Now, the trees and maturity, are there any trees that are ready now? Because 20 years from now, I mean, it looks beautiful in 20 years. That interest would look good in 20 years. But is there something more that can be done right now? Because the maturity date on those trees is, I think you said, 20 years some species or are there other species out there that mature fast yes that mature faster that would make it appropriate for you to look out across yeah. from She's onto the property the She's across the street <laughs> or plant yeah. more mature trees that, that we're, we're going to that this is great feedback it's a feedback we want to get because we're definitely 
like we recognize we're still early days and we want to get this feedback so we can be I did have a question it. about the, the retaining pond. The one that's right behind the houses because that buffer that's there with the trees is not like that in real life. I mean we can from my kitchen I can see the water. Yep. Um, so that those trees are not there. Um, well it's not doesn't look like that. Can they build some sort of uh can they contain that just that one there? Can they contain it in some sort of you know um, so that whatever in there stays in there and doesn't come on our property? Yeah. One, these will be definitely be built so that the water does not cross property lines. The whole reason why they're being created. Well, not just the water, but whatever critters or whatever right. starts harvesting in there. Oh, okay. Doesn't get out. Um, definitely something, yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to take a hard look at those issues. We've heard now a couple times. The other thing that I know has come up a couple times is it's not simply the view from Heritage Park, but it's kind of that view right over that creek. How do we, or right over that retention that's, pond. Right? That, that's exactly where I, I want to know how, how high is that wall from those two houses on the Heritage Park. The first one is mine, and the second one is my neighbor here. I want to know, yes, that's what I'm talking about. How high is that wall back there? So that, I, I that, that right, a, yeah, that, yes. So right. the wall, so it's probably a misconception because it's not a wall that's being built up, right? The wall, the wall is in place. So the land comes down and then we had to cut, right, to lower the elevation of where our data center is. So the wall is a retaining wall to keep, essentially to keep the earth from falling. So there's oh, no, so the okay, wall is built not already. It's not so a it's wall not that's not currently, wall. it's not okay. a wall that's going to be built on top okay. right now. That's I think that's a little bit of a it's a retaining. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so that, that wall won't be any higher than what it is currently? As it, as it, as it stands, so once again, this, the, the original LDP facing plan that got approved had the wall there, right, as part of it, right? I think in this revision of the site plan process, we're looking at, I think Diane's taking all the feedback, and if we need to make an adjustment to we won't be able to do anything with this retaining wall because it's already built. If we have to step back and build another higher wall, it won't be a retaining wall. So the no, retaining I walls are built. It is a retaining wall. It's a retaining wall for the earth, right? It's just so retaining wall just holds the earth. It's not a visual barrier wall. And I think that's what you're asking about is the visual barrier wall. Yes, it's not a visual barrier, barrier wall. We like that. We like a visual barrier. I really, really would. Uh, you know, so that you're just not looking, because we can't, as, as I look out my back a porch out there, I can see, I can't see any wall or anything, but I can see daylight through my trees, which I was never able to see. And Ms. Carmen here, she says she sees the sun come up every morning, or go down, which it, the old one that I never saw that she never saw before. We're seeing, and I, I looked out there and said, "Why can I see daylight from where I'm, I'm standing?" Where I'm standing. The buffer is not as thick and remarkable as it looks. No, no, it's good. Yeah, and, and you're absolutely right. This is clearly the background of this particular in summer. Um, that's the one thing we're talking about. So I think one of the things um, that we definitely heard during our one-on-one conversations, as well as here again, is how do we make sure that that buffer is there, you know, winter and summer? Uh, yeah. So what, um, that, that, how many feet is it between the end of the retaining wall and the end of the already has a buffer on top of it between the property line and that wall because we wanted we didn't want to mess with that buffer, right? So the, the property line and I think we we can definitely talk to you in a little bit more detail about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. The cross sections may show some yeah. of that. But, but that's definitely the type of thing that you know we can talk about it here shortly and then dive okay. into it. We'll, we'll 
some sort, because right now if I'm standing at the back of my property, it's, it's exactly what like you said, it's a retention wall. So yes. it's going to keep all your construction, debris, mud, everything on one side, and then the trees are on the other side, but once the buildings are in place, it wouldn't have any value at that point from a visual standpoint. So it's doing what it's supposed to do now, but in the future it wouldn't have any visual value from me not knowing what's happening in my backyard. Exactly. It's not the table wall, it's just coming to the Yeah. Yeah, you would stuff down here. Yeah, do you? You could get you guys have to put something there. I think a lot of these questions are really good questions, and they're tech questions that we can actually have the materials that we want to be able to have these one-on-one -on -one conversations with you about. Um, so what, um, it probably makes sense for us now to kind of break up and have those one-on-one -on -one conversations. Uh, oh, Dr. Martin Rogers had the question about the Oh, right. Yeah. Right. So on the, on the substation, um, Yes, uh, our brokers looked around for a place that could work. Um, the city uh, partnered with them on the town and a bunch of other sites. Um, unfortunately, uh, as you can see, it's a pretty big station. So the sites that we uh, were able to identify, many of them fell short of the acreage requirement. And then others, uh, like we were a lot closer to the project. And what we're going to do. Um, either uh, residents nearby or residents in other communities that we didn't want to just voice a problem with something else. And this was kind of the best solution that we could come up with, looking at a whole range of options. Like I said, uh, working with Darren uh, and others. This got it the furthest away from residents. If I could just piggyback on um, Dr. Rogers' uh, question and uh, Jonathan's points. So uh, in addition to the, the broker doing their due diligence on the site, I actually went to each um, of the sites that the city provided us. I believe you guys provided about five to six sites. Um, six sites in total. And like Jonathan laid out, we have an acreage requirement, at least 10 acres. Five of those sites did not meet that requirement. Um, I went to each of those sites this evening and um, Again, to Jonathan's point, you got closer residential properties than what we have here. And so what we've done instead is move that substation as far west as we can. Right here, we've got wetlands, we've got stream buffers, we've got utility lines that we have to worry about. So we honestly feel like this is a happy medium. Um, again, as far west as we possibly can. Uh, and the other point I want to, yes ma'am. We can get that for you. And I just wanted to also remind the group here, uh, in about a month of, or a half or so, uh, Georgia Power will be... Uh, um, Denise is here tonight, so she can't hear the answer question. Exactly. Yeah, she said not. She can answer the question. So probably, it probably be helpful for you. Would you like to speak to that? And while uh, the heat is coming. I still want to know what the dimensions of the area, even though it's not yes, a structure of that area for that. That's we'll get that for you, Mr. Griffin. And I also want to acknowledge uh, Councilman Butler. He's here. We want to thank him uh, for his leadership and support as well. All right. Good evening. Danita Godwin, uh, Georgia Power Area Manager for South Fulton County. 
Um, so with the relocation of, excuse me, the potential relocation of the substation, that of course means that the transmission routing will also change. Um, we have an alternate route that will completely avoid the um, 31 properties that we originally sent out a letter to. So we will not be using that route anymore. Um, I don't see where I can show you on this because we're coming way to the north. Um, you all may be familiar with the industrial areas. There's like a Dix. Are you all familiar with that? That is the area in which we're going in. So it's fully commercial and industrial. Um, so those property owners have already been contacted and we are currently moving forward with the surveying process. So as long as we're able to get a good solid location with the substation, then that is designed, this, with this, this location, that is the design we will continue to go with. And once we're able to finalize it, then the uh, 31 property owners will receive a letter just stating we will not be approaching you for this particular project anymore. So we hope to tie that up very, very soon. But we need to make sure we're able to finalize this substation location and completely get it off off of the, the list. Yes, sir? What was your last on top of it? I'll be honest with you, I am not completely sure. That is not my area of expertise. Um, but like I said, we will, like John said, we will be um, having a meeting. We're going to work with the mayor to get a good date. We're looking in the next couple of weeks, sometime before the end of February, if not the beginning of March, so that you all can come speak with us personally, get some more detailed questions, have my line design, my transmission people there, all of the experts there that have done the new design and can kind of talk you through everything. Yes, ma'am. Now again, the substation location is not a Georgia Power decision. So, but once Microsoft, once you all come to an agreement with Microsoft on where the location is, that's when we can finalize our transmission routing. Because if the if the substation moves, we may have to restart back at ground zero with our transmission routing. Route. But using this location, we are able to take those 31 properties completely off the table. So when you say uh, the transmission route, yes, ma'am. Are you talking about the big tall? I am. I am. Yes, so you're saying they'll be on the other side of Bend Hill Road. Correct. So, um, well, I don't. Know. Let me show you what I have to show you that it does not show up. On. Hopefully she'll be able to pull up maybe an aerial shot and I can kind of point it out to you. You said Dick's, do you mean Duke's property? It is Duke property, but I think it looks like there is a Dick's maybe manufacturing or something that's, yep, that's currently there. So uh, the transmission, new transmission routing is to the north and directly to the south of it. So it hugs the that industrial port. Okay, someone has come through and put blue lines all across that front. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Someone has painted blue lines all the way to, up to Mr. Williams' property, all the way down to Heritage Park. And I'm wondering if we put that, those lines there and what they plan to do. I don't, it should not be us. Um, like I said, we're completely surveying in that industrial area, but I can definitely find out. But no, ma'am, I do not think it is us, but I can definitely find out for you. Yep. Any other questions I may be answering be answer at the time? And while she's pulling it up. Someone is asking about lighting for the property. Like how will lighting, I don't know if that's a Microsoft question. I think that's gonna be will a Microsoft. Be on all night, all throughout the day, will they shut off the lighting for the property? So all the from the security standpoint for a life safety standpoint, uh, the lights will need to be on. But we are designing them to be shielded and point down. The one thing we don't want to do is have the leakage spill out. So that is going to be part of the design. Next level design that would be to make it very comfortable to put things in place. But that's something that's incorporated as we begin with our city. Yes. Oh, um, that is definitely. 
doesn't have a bunch of us and stuff on And then my last question is the entrance yeah. to the property. Is that as far away as it can be? What about that other? I know behind where Porsche is, I cannot think of the name of the street. Is it the Welcome All Connector? Could you enter the property? by the Welcome All Connector side, or do you have to be on Big Hill? And has there been a traffic study done? Yeah, uh, so tra uh, traffic studies, environmental studies, wetland studies, uh, historic studies um, have all been uh, completed. In terms of location of the entry, because of the wetlands that border one whole side, well, two whole sides of the site, uh, and then Big Hill borders the other two, you don't really have an option beyond what's coming to the road. What we tried to do was align it with the uh, use facility right across the street. So that's the same uh, kind of creating a normal intersection versus if it is to stagger, it can really create a natural track. So we're really trying to make that work. And then the um, other entrance as they have a lot of um, that kind of further and around, that is emergency vehicle only. Uh, it's something that um, should the main entrance be shut down because there is a fire or an accident right there? Um, clearly, safety vehicles need to be able to access the rest of the site. Um, so that is not a site that's needed by employees. Uh, it's purely a of the Okay, so Diane has pulled up a good aerial of it, and you all can try to find, try to call the little corner area. But what we're going to do, we're coming up right through here, and we're cutting straight through this area right here. And then we'll dip down. Where are we at? Um, that's the, uh, what is the this right away right here. So we're going to pull off of that and we're coming straight up, cutting all the way through and then we'll dip down into the substation. So that's going to be the north end because there is going to be a loop. So also we're going to come from the same right of way and we're hugging the bottom part and almost kind of tracing it in a sense, kind of tracing the, um, the um, industrial park and again so where um, the first routing, we were coming through this south side where the residential was, we're totally out of that way now. So a quick question. Yes. So there is another community there, uh, the Summer Lake community. Mm -hmm. uh, that community is at least 40 years old. Okay. So the Fort Heritage Park and mm -hmm. Savannah Walk was even built. Mm -hmm. So that means we'll be impacted on that side of the street. Well, but we will not, you will probably see it, but I will tell you, you have not, have you been contacted for a survey? Not on the higher end, so we're on summer land. Summer land and sleep land have been contacted. So it still kind of puts all of this. So, okay, so across from Miss Carter. I'm not. Okay, not so. Yeah. He's in the back of summer land. Yeah, we're in summer land. We're on the back side of yeah, Savannah Walk. Uh, he's in the back of summer land. So you've community. recently received a letter? We haven't got any communication. Ever. Well, exactly. So all communication has gone out. We're currently doing surveying. So if you have not received a letter, your property will not be impacted. So it's not to say that it will not be close to your property, but your property will not be impacted. All the property is commercial and industrial. Okay. Yes. But that's not to say that you will not see a structure but we will not be coming to you for an easement or anything like that. So me personally, I'm liking option number two versus three. The second option is moving it further down the hill road, close towards the soccer field. To me, that option is better because it doesn't impact those credits on so summer later. Say that again, which so, get so with the substation, as well as the transfer lines, to me, it, it now impacts the other side of the field. Oh, so what you're saying is you like the initial. Not the first one, the second, the revised, which is the 
move the substation further down Correct. into the curve. Because I've yes. seen Georgia Power go survey. Yes. But as far as bringing the lines in, I don't think the lines should go into Summer Lake. So here, for example, we're here. So there's a subdivision that runs. See, Ms. Carter home is here. So that's a, that's a subdivision all back in here okay. that you don't see on the map. Everybody's focused on Heritage Park and Savannah Wall, but Heritage Park, but how about Summerlin and Savannah? So we're impacted further. Yeah, right. That's where the subdivision so, is? So this is uh, this is Savannah. Okay. Summerlin is an older community. It runs right through these trees, kind of get trees. There's a yes. subdivision through here. You see okay. homes back in mm -hmm. here. So what you're talking about doing is not impacting the other side of the neighborhood, of the you, community. You will see, you, like I said, your property, because yes, it is a loop fee. So whereas, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm in the way, but it will, the top side is gonna uh, start from here, it's gonna hug, and then it's gonna come down. That's, it's not two, it's two different feeds, but they have to be loose. So it's, so it's considered one feed, but two different sets of lines, if that makes any sense. So that is the first set. The second set, again, we're gonna pull from this existing right of way, and we're gonna hug all of this commercial property. So, in this area, yes, you actually may very well see the transmission structures, but if you have not been contacted for a survey, because we are staying on commercial or industrial property, however this is, however this is on, but we are not touching any other residential property. Okay, so we can yes. see from our home. But you may, yeah, you may actually, you may see it. We can yes. see Amazon, we can see Dick Sporting Goods, we can see uh, Home Depot, we can see all this. At yes. nighttime, you can see the glow coming to the neighborhood. It's lit up from all this industrial development. Mm -hmm. Before this development, it was pitch black. Now everything's just glowing. It's like it's summertime or sunny throughout the night. It's always glowing. It's like the moon is up, sun is up constantly. So our concern is to make sure that we have a voice on the summer left side, Absolutely. not just on the heritage Absolutely. park side. Absolutely. I know they're a new development, we welcome the community, but at the same time, the existing community that's been impacted needs to be considered as well. So correct, correct. Well, um, like I said, we're gonna get a date out and you will be able to talk to our um, our line design, our transmission design. And they can show you a picture of the structures um, and probably give you a better feel as to maybe where the, the exact structures may be located. So it may, you may not see a structure at all. Maybe you'll just see the lines or maybe there will be a structure a little closer. So again, I'm not really sure how far apart they space them. Um, transmission lines, they are spaced a little further than you may see their distribution. This which are the ones that feed into your home. This is all overhead. Correct, yes. Yes, it is once again, it is overhead. Yeah. Any other questions I can answer at the moment? All right, well, thank you all. These are all great questions. We'll uh, allow Diane to finish oh. her presentation and then we'll uh, head into our breakout sessions. Just remind you that uh, we have the different folks around the room available to talk, and also Danita and Tina um, from Georgia Power. And we just welcome you. We have um, we have a couple of cross sections that might help show how the, the data center is sunk down um, into the hillside. And really appreciate your questions, your ongoing feedback, and thank you all for your time and for being here. And in case you want to know our contact information, uh, our blog's at local.microsoft.com forward slash East Point, our email and phone number as well. So, oh, I'm so sorry. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Are you trying to put the parking below you or the Um. Well, since we're coming, since let's just say some of the buildings will actually be hugging, they're going to be on the front end of that. Does, do you need me to get Diana to pull it up again? Or I can, you know what, I can show you. Correct. That's exactly what I was saying, yeah. Yeah, there is that potential, absolutely. I'm trying to picture how that would look in front of those buildings. Are those substations not able to be designed with underground lines? 
safety buffers, of course, um, and let's see what land is available. I don't see why we, that cannot be discussed. Yeah. Well, it, maybe not as much. I was asking about underground lines instead of overhead Is that a possibility? Um, it is a, nothing is impossible, but I will tell you there are a lot of 